Hello, everyone, and welcome to Connect. I'm your host, Randy Shabilo. Today, we'll have John Perret, the photographer, talking about his book, Love This Saskatchewan, as well as Brandon Brown and April Rogers talking about solstice on the South Saskatchewan. As always, we'd like to connect with you. Tweet us at connect underscore YXZ. Follow us on Facebook to watch new and past interviews or email connectyxz at gmail.com with any future guest or topic suggestions. Love the Saskatchewan by John Perret and those with a love of photography can appreciate the work that's gone into this book. Uh, fabulous uh, exposition of your work, John, and I want to thank you first of all for taking some time out to come in today and well, have a little chat about me. your work here. Uh, you have been a photographer for a long time. Your family's been involved in business here, your mom and dad I know. Uh, let's maybe start with your early beginnings in the city and how you grew into photography. Well, I was destined to be an engineer. <laughs> and then? So I started out in university as an engineer, moved into the uh, fine arts area, then moved into teaching. And when I interned, I interned at Fian with uh, a mentor, Mr. Jerry Savage. And he got me onto photography. The first print I ever developed was at E.D. Fian High School. And there was no looking back. That was it. I just loved the medium. I loved the, the way it worked. I loved what I could do with it. And I loved, I think, the speed of it, you know, because it was instantaneous. Once you took that picture, you had it. So um, it's not like painting where you have to work through it and then maybe work through it again and again and again. That photo was instantaneous. So that's what I think captured my imagination. I know uh, Jerry Savage, a testament to his talents over the years. He was a photographer back when in the 60s yep. uh, with the government as well. Uh, a mentor of mine, and I'm glad you mentioned his name. Uh, we owe that to you, Jerry, if you're watching. Um, let's talk a little bit about your, your career in photography, because you, not only were you a teacher, but you also had that capacity to branch out and do this on your own professionally. I did, yeah. I became a member of the... Professional Photographers, Photographers of Canada and uh, achieved my Masters of Photography through them and um, had done photography both in, in the classroom and outside of the classroom and developed, I, I guess, a business, uh, somewhat of a business doing that too. We did commercial, we did weddings, we did just about everything that came along. And <clears throat> my passion, of course, was uh, landscape photography. And I always did that along the way. And uh, now it's the opposite. I'm doing only landscape photography and have kind of moved out of the other areas. So I'm with my passion now in, in terms of what I'm doing. So it's come full circle, basically. Let's talk a little <laughs> bit about uh, how it was when I say we well, are a little bit older than I am, but not by much. Uh, talk a little bit about the equipment that we started with and how it's kind of changed to where we're at today. Yeah, we started out with film and uh, at one point in time I probably had 75,000 uh, slides and uh, I think in some ways I thought that was going to be my claim to fame but they've gone out of style <clears throat> and I've spent the last uh, winter digitizing them, bringing them into digital. When we started with digital, I was very reluctant. I really didn't think it was going to go that quickly. A passing fad, kind of? Yeah, and a passing fad. But, yeah. uh, and the digital cameras for a landscape photographer did not work well. Uh, a tree would have zigzags in it, so you couldn't see it clearly. It was at a distance. It was not as good as film. So uh, I didn't think it was going to go quite out of style. But <clears throat> the cameras kept up, and, and now you can get... Uh, I don't know, when I open up an image, it can be 125 megapixels, so the clarity is just awesome. The other thing that's a real advantage is you're not spending money on film. And um, I can take as many pictures as I want, I can do it as many times as I want, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't cost me any more than the camera itself. So uh, in that sense, digital has really been a, a money saver for me, I guess, and... and uh, and, you know, not knowing whether that photograph is a saleable item is you can take it and not have to worry about it. You can deal with it 
when you get it home. But that's, it went very quickly. You know, we started in, I think it was 2002, dealing with digital. And it's been nonstop ever since. We do everything in digital now. I think that's uh, interesting from uh, my point of view as well, as I was a photographer with the military. Uh, but when that film wouldn't track and wouldn't advance and you'd shoot 36 and 37 and 38 and you get to E and then you knew you had a problem, <laughs> uh, now you can at least preview that photo and kind of see instantaneously, you know, what's there. Yeah, now you mentioned that. You know, I, <clears throat> I um, went to a photographer's presentation and, he took probably 20 shots of the same image, and they were all bracketed. He'd start at the very lowest uh, of the exposure and then go to the very highest. you do that two or three times, so you don't have to do that anymore. You can hit that little button and know instantaneously what you have, whether you like it or don't, or whether you have to go a little higher or lower. So it, it cuts down on the time factor, too, in terms of taking the image. I guess sure. if you're taking photos of people, you can see if they blinked as well, and oh, you know. Absolutely, <laughs> you can change right. heads if you want, <laughs> Randy. <laughs> if you don't like the head, <laughs> I'm still old school. Uh, talk a little bit about you. There was an award that you won with Fuji, uh, and that was a little while ago. But uh, to, to to get that type of acclamation, I think, is significant. Yeah, the Fuji in Canada. The Fuji Award was one of the most prestigious awards in Canada, and we got that for. One of the prints that was entered in the PPOC competition, and um, we were given that for that that particular print. I don't have it with me, but um, one of one of the things I always did was enter competitions and make sure that I did the best possible print or production that I could do. And even in digital, we'd still do that eh? and and uh, and present it, and then get some feedback on it too. It, it helps my development and it helps knowing what I'm doing. And it's, uh, when you look at the, the photos in your book, I mean, it's, it's where we live and it's uh, appropriately titled, uh, Love This Saskatchewan. Uh, what was it that, that drew you to a lot of the pictures that are in this book? Boy, <clears throat> what draws me to a photograph is usually um, some kind of mood to it. Uh, I don't like taking photographs at high noon. I like taking them early in the morning when the light or the mist or um, the colors are really saturated in the morning because of the dew. Mm -hmm. And um, so I like, I like a picture with mood. The one on the front cover here has rolling light moving across the landscape. Uh, if I had a video, it would be great. You could see it. But you can you, people who have seen that on the, um, can see it on the cover that... Yeah, there's clouds and it's rolling through, the light's rolling through. So it's very often the light, the mood um, that attracts me to that. So when you're doing a, a landscape uh, photo, is there an element of, I wonder if the general public will like this or I'm here to share what <clears throat> is in this moment in time right now? I think the idea that somebody else will like it is always in the back of your mind. But I always try and take and compose the way I want it and the way I see it. And um, I will take different uh, exposures and different, uh, uh, different placements of a subject. I don't like taking a photograph with no subject. I like having at least one little subject somewhere that's gonna attract attention or catch your eye. So it's, uh, I think it's experience that points me in that direction and looking at other people's good photography that uh, say, gee, why, I wish I took that. And when I say that, I, uh, that's a compliment because it's a good, fo it's got a good photograph. I have a good feeling for it. So my work is the same way. It, it's uh, much about being in the right place at the right time, even with the recently released photo of the, the American bald eagle, right. uh, just uh, with a, a dead on that's view. That's a good example of that. Yeah. Yeah. So in, when you're out there and, and doing this, mm. uh, I think it's, important just for the general population to know that the amount of work that goes to traveling, setting things up, batteries are all good and, and making sure all your equipment's in, in order. Are, are there any particular types of uh, lenses or varieties of cameras that work well for these conditions? Uh, I have a variety of lenses all, all the way from very wide angle for sky shots to 400 millimeter telephoto for animals or birds or things like that. So I still carry a variety. With, the idea with digital is that you wouldn't have to do that. What 
all the serious photographers have kind of gravitated back to that because it gives you that ability to take whatever photo that co comes along. And most people don't do that. And uh, I take pains to get out um, of the city and go, go to areas where I think are um, going to attract, be, be attractive at certain times and, and take photos. Most people just drive by. So, thank you for stopping, <laughs> sharing that. Has, have you ever encountered uh, any su surprises with uh, wasp nests or maybe uh, some wildlife that would happen to be floating through uh, um, some of the the landscape photos when you're standing there? Yeah, there, there's um, uh, a couple of times where you uh, see animals just you're driving by and all of a sudden. There, there they are, like pelicans on a slough or something. And um, so you drive by and carefully get your camera ready, turn around and then just and <laughs> drive back and come to a stop and go yeah. shoot, shoot real fast and, and try to get them. And, and what all is, these eagles and things like that are yeah, real scarcity. Yeah. They're hard to, hard to photograph and hard to find. And what, uh, there's a show coming up uh, in Duck Lake you mentioned. Uh, I have, um, I've that. tried to keep up with shows and at this point in time, gallery space is uh, at a premium, but I've done a show called Love the Saskatchewan and it's at uh, Duck Lake uh, Interpretive Centre. It's opening July 1st, Canada Day. And um, we'll be there, My, I'll be there signing books and uh, giving interviews or whatever, talking to people about my work. And this is one of the things that really excites me is, you know, to have a show where people can interact with, with me or interact with the work and I can see what's happening. I think it's a tremendous learning opportunity and uh, God bless you for the work you've done over the years. It's been magnificent. Uh, but love the Saskatchewan uh, in Duck Lake starting July 1st. Starting July 1st. Canada yeah. Day. Uh, pick it up when you can. Thank you for your work and coming and making some time for us today. Well, thank you. Stay with us, folks. We'll be right back.